We recording right now? Yeah. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's go, let's go. Uh, can I get a three? Can three. I get a two? Two. Can I get a one? One. Music played. Fourth place in the New York City Marathon. My homeboy <laughs> Keith in the building. What's good, bro? Chilling, man. Chilling. And NAACP award recipient. <laughs> this perfect touch in the building with me. What's going on? This perfect touch. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was me. great. That was great. I love that introduction right there. It, we are perfect <laughs> talk. We got another podcast right for y'all. Episode three. We in the building. We're on three. We made it, y'all. Wow. Terrible threes. Number three, man. <laughs> it's exciting times, man. Good things coming threes, y'all. What's good? What's new with, with y'all? What's going on, man? Oh, man. Niche? Keith, you go first. Keith? Me? Yeah, I was well, good. put me on the spot. Well, Keith gets, I like he's getting it. married every week. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it. That's like pretty much been my life. It's marriage. Paying for this. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I got to do, I got to um, I gotta start working out again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, tuxedo like, fit? I, I got to get the tuxedo fit Ow. right. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't trying to have, like... The weird shape to my suit. Yes. Of, yeah, I can't be out there shaped like Dr. Robotnik, kid. I, I got to get my, my life together. Just hit the gym and eat right. That's all that matters. They take a lot of pictures that day, man. Yeah. Okay. Sounds about good. Me, uh, yo, just running around, DJing and um, finishing up my project. Actually, right now, just recorded um another song for uh, my project. I got I have coming out my EP called Overdue. So we're gearing up for that. Um, you already know when I get ready to shoot these visuals, I need my brothers to make sure y'all there. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. So uh, you know, you got a release date or anything? Nah, Nothing I know. Right um, pretty much my rollout will be uh probably the end of second quarter. So. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with uh, that type of uh, language, let me see, May, June. It'll probably be like around July. Okay. And where July. can they follow you on uh, social media to keep up with that? Bam. Well, you can catch me everywhere at AO Niche, A Y O N I S H. That's pretty much it right Twitter, there. Instagram, Facebook. Twitty, tw- Twitty. <laughs> Twitty, Insty, <laughs> all of that. Um, Snap. Pal, A-O Niche. That's, that that's pretty much nice, it. Yeah, nice, you know. Nice. Make sure y'all check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Perfect Talk Radio on Instagram. Perfect Talk Pod on Twitter. Because we in the building. Oh, yeah. And what we got going on this week, man? I, I know if y'all checked out the last episode, y'all heard us talking a lot of Nikki and Remy. It was uh, Sheether and another one, but it wasn't too much noise coming from Nikki's side. Not at all. She, she was Sheether and back to back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did hear, I don't know how true that was. I did hear she had to come out with the another one because... Uh, I mean, the other, the, another one, yeah, not back to back, but it was over the back to back beat. I it was think. over the back to back beat. Yeah, you couldn't catch it at first unless you lived. Yeah, like it was back to back junior. I don't know. She called it another one, but the she, sequel. She she, couldn't, she couldn't record. She couldn't perform uh, Ether because the Sony wouldn't let her because of the beat. Yeah. Um, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they said that Nas shut it down. I don't know how much Nas. Sony did Nas. Yeah. You think Nas? Nas probably don't even know about that beat. I don't even think Nas, Nas has control over that type of stuff. Nas is a cranky old man in his thirties. Imagine now he ain't on social media. And I was like, Nikki from Queens? <laughs> <laughs> Who? But yeah, uh, so she, she was hitting her hard, hitting her with a couple rib shots. Uh, but Nikki bounced back. She dropped three in a row. Sort of. Three. <laughs> Took it straight to Twitter, uh, Instagram, and then social medias. Dropped it out there on iTunes. Um, but one of them, I believe, was no frauds. And, and changed it? Oh, changed it. Was another one. Was there a diss on that one, too? I, I, mm. They say she dropped three, and every one that she had, she, she had little, was pretty much, but yeah. No frauds was the one, I think, that she was. That really went yeah, in? Yeah, you know that. She's obviously talking about Remy. She called him BX Basic. <laughs> <laughs> she called her uh, a lot of stuff. Basically, had an Instagram um, post about it saying that, you know, Queens, uh, Make music when they want to. They don't. They move on boss time, basically. And, they don't, mm. you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I think she gave uh, Remy a little countdown on when okay. she can respond. Um, the streets were, were, were the mixed reviews. You know, what I mean, a lot of people I think were respecting a full on uh, ether response. So one of like maybe three verses of her just getting at Remy, which I don't. I don't. Yeah, because she, she had the title. features. So yeah. So, how do you guys feel about like feel about that? We're having features on the diss track. I said on the last one, I was like, I'm not respecting anything when uh, Wayne and, and, and Drake on it. You, so. you damn sure did. <laughs> I, I just, I don't, I thought, but I did, with that being said, I did think she had 
said what needed to be said. I thought she addressed the issue. But it's like if we're going to sit there and compare the two side to side, column A, column B, I'm thinking i got to give that point to Remy because she, she's spitting bars. I think Nikki just needed to check a box off and respond. And I think you you, you had mentioned, Plicker, that um, – Probably gonna make like a, a album out of it, make it like an actual musical mm-hmm. piece, and not just like a just getting at Remy. You know what I'm saying? Because at the very least, if if it's kind of weak, then it's still a good song, which it was. It was a decent Nicki Minaj song. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So probably one of the better Nicki Minaj songs I heard in a while. To be what? honest, because I, I wasn't crazy about Anaconda and everything that came out with that project. But. Yeah, I can't see you really liking Anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> Super, you'd be surprised. I like Super <laughs> but like not Anaconda. Um. But like beef is beef is uh is is in the air right now. Oh yeah, Rick guess, Rose. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're still waiting for Remy to respond too. But you know, oh, like, yeah. you know that's gotta come. The Remy's not just gonna let that that ride. But yeah, Rick Ross um dropped a verse or oh, actually mm. a full song about Birdman. Uh, so do you know the, the title of it? Um, it's called Idols Become Rivals. It's on that new album, uh, Better You Than Me. Check that out on iTunes. Uh, it's out. Just came out like uh, this weekend. I'm feeling the titles. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling mm-hmm. like Idols Become Rivals. I mean, I just. Rick Ross is a, a very creative guy. You got to give him his, his respect. Uh, Isn't that inspired by that um, that J. Cole song? That, like that B-side song when he was... Getting at Kanye. And was that, that like False Idols or something like that? False Idols. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was inspired profits. by that. False Profits. But, but, okay. very, but I think, what, was it one of the lines in the song? Something to the effect of when your idols become, become rivals. rivals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Either way, I mean, I think um, it's... Uh, a cool title. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool title and... Yo, I'm I'm loving what's going on. How did you guys actually feel about you know what I'm saying first time listen? How um, did... I mean it was. I don't know Birdman. I know the perception of him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I never. I didn't go to school with yeah, him. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> I, I mean, I knew his moms and shit, but you know. <laughs> none of them. So you know what I mean? Stunner, Birdman, none of them. So I, I know what I know from uh, following Cash Money since like high school, and just seeing um different the whole things. movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. And never was positive, you know what I mean? And never really was like, yo, uh, he's the great businessman or he's taking care of it. I mean, and Puffy kind of got some of the same uh, backlash, too, when he had uh, a lot of his first artists because they were saying that he was getting them for the publishing. It seems like Birdman has a thing where he, he kind of, you know, he's going to pay you, he's gonna, but he's not going to pay you what he owes you. It's yeah. kinda, you ever seen Cadillac Records? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was throwing Cadillacs at dudes instead of really, but he was eating off their royalties at the end of the day, but they were just happy to be getting free cars and, and uh getting out of the lifestyle yeah when you're making the art that you when you you can get paid whatever penny when you first starting from making your art of course you're hype but then when you start really seeing yo you're not even yeah you're not even the one making the art and you're uh you're getting all this extra bread what's Um, the deal with that with that being said though i i I respect rick ross for stepping up and um speaking on it but you gotta some of these artists they gotta take self-responsibility like this is true you heard those rumors and you still felt very comfortable signing with Birdman. you know what i mean so I think I think um, <clears throat> rap was built on like this. It was like a fraternal order almost. Like a lot of like the different regions of rap. Like you, you kind of rapping with your friends. So I guess with the commercialization and when you see someone who's you know they're from where you're from, and they take on the the role of being an executive, you'd hope that they would also take on the role of kind of being your friend. And you know, not jerking you over, and not being that that shock of a businessman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, just even listening though to to what Birdman was saying. I mean, he hit. He pretty much did address the elephant in the room. You know what I'm uh, saying? What Ross was saying to Birdman. I mean, uh, my fault. What uh, Ross was saying to Birdman. Yeah, like I, I love it. I love that someone's actually taking a stand. It's also, Stance though, on it, you I, know what I mean? I think the view of it could be looked at, like, what does this really got to do with you, Rick Ross? Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he's touching on Khaled, and Khaled is his homie. Ross came in the game with Khaled, you know what I mean? He helped Khaled blow up, so I can see why he feels like he has some type of a say in it. Yeah, yeah. But, and plus, I mean, I feel as though, you know, Ross has been around for a while, you know what I mean? He's made some dope art, so I feel like he definitely, he can say something. He's worked with these guys before, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, the homie, whatever happened with the homie, and um, I feel like a lot of rappers really haven't come to the to the front, you know, with respect to defending Wayne like that. And Wayne even tweeted that he felt inspired. Yeah, and he was like, yo, that, yeah. thank you, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it added to the motivation and inspiration for, you know what I mean, not just even Ross, I mean, not even just for um, Lil Wayne, but probably even just all the other people that are part of, you know, cash money, so. And it probably meant a lot coming, that kind of meant a lot to Lil Wayne, 
But obviously it means a lot to Lil Wayne, that kind of sentiment coming from Rick Ross. Yeah. Because the position Rick Ross is in, one, he's, exactly. he's one of the biggest names yep. in the game. Um, two, he, he's an executive and a boss in his own right, so he knows what it's like. Or I hope he knows what it's like to treat his rappers the way that, the way that they yeah. should be treated. And mm-hmm. knowing that, you know, some people ain't great about their business as others, and that you should be more of a mentor than try to exactly. exploit that fact that, you know, maybe you have a, mentally you have like a one-up on them. You know, you should actually be trying to make both of y'all win. R- Ross can win, and Wale can win, and all his other artists, so. Yeah. It's, it's hard, though, because um, we're looking at it from a business standpoint where the executive I don't, I don't like to use the, the slavery metaphor. So you're looking at it with, um, where the... Andre ex- Iguodala. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where the, the executive is going to make more money than you really should think because he's giving you that platform, but you're the talent. Yeah. And it's more so like an issue where um, you're always going to feel like you're not getting paid what you're, what you're supposed to. But there's a certain line. Like, mm-hmm. yo, you, this is Wayne. He's contributed this much to our label. He's supposed to be getting that much. And... Even if you really look, do the history on it, Wayne wasn't really dissing Juvenile, BG, Turk, Manny Fresh. Nah, he, not at all. He made that um, I Miss My Dogs song. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, like it, But he also was there to see it firsthand. So if anyone could have got out that situation when it was time to get out of it, you know, it was him. And he decided, all right, I want to stay with Birdman. I want to stick with this Birdman, gave him a label and all that. Um, I just think he didn't think it was going to turn on that. You know, when you trust people, that, that friendship just turns into something else. So the whole thing about it is free Lil Wayne, like free him from cash money. Is that what's going on right now? Or that's what I'm getting from it. Cause they're, they're saying that, um, to release, release him from the actual contract that he has and also to pay him. Mm. If I'm not mistaken. He better just take that release. So. <laughs> 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 get that money. <laughs> but, um, Oh, is that, is that the hashtag going around? Free Weezy? Yeah. Free Weezy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I miss Weezy. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I'm a Lil Wayne fan, so I miss hearing um, stuff on Weezy, and it's it's rough only having to hear him on features. But it's you made your bed, you gotta sleep in it. Man. And um, lastly, you know, we can close up this uh this part. But they said um that Birdman must feel foolish now because um he cleared Young Thug to actually be on the album. So it's like, yo, Who to be album? on Rick Ross's album. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, so it's like, yo, yeah. damn, you know, he pretty much stabbed me in my goddamn back. <laughs> <laughs> Young Thugger. Yeah, man. So also, uh, also, we got some other stuff going on. Any other beefs going on? I don't think so. I think uh, no. they say Drake is taking some shots right on his new album. Uh, Drake is always taking shots when he drops <laughs> an album. Life, but I know who do got beef, uh, Russell Wilson and Future. <laughs> yeah, that beef been, <laughs> That's that Kobe beef, yeah. <laughs> they going on for a minute. But you know what? I ain't go front. I feel like in this situation, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sierra has had uh, multiple relationships that have been in the public eye. And I can finally say, I feel like from sister to sister, she's winning. She's win. This one, this one right here is the big W for her. Like, I feel like in the past she's dealt with other guys and it's kind of, she's kind of taken the L, mm-hmm. but now she's winning. She's, I mean, she's doing really great. Even with um her her new music that's about to come out. Does she have new music? Yeah. She's uh, been recording in the studio. There's been shots of her in the studio. I mean, yo, she, this is the W for her right now. I, I, okay. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. Maybe you can answer a question for me from a female standpoint. What's up? What's, what's the mentality behind it? I, think, I don't know if this is CIO's mentality. Once again, I never met her. But uh, what's the whole thing with the thug mentality? So with a, a woman who's attracted to the guy, the thug, where does she think that's going to lead to? Because like right now you say she's winning. She's got yeah. a, a respectful guy, professional career. Ah, uh, this is true. Uh, I feel you. You know, he's very respectful. Yeah. yeah. If you ever have a conversation with Russell Wilson, I can't think of anything that we've ever could point out that he did anything that uh, could be viewed as disrespectful. Well, there's that one clip where he has his, uh, Ciara's homegirl. Whoa! Uh, sit on his lap. <laughs> we touch on that. Chocolate yeah, yeah, yeah. papa. <laughs> but uh, no, no. It's, I don't really see where girls think it's gonna lead to when you get with these dudes that that, that just all about that thug lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like, where is that going? I know you're attracted to the bad boys and and they you got that ideal, but thinking long run, I just I just and I brought that up just because you use the term like she's winning now. She uh, yeah. I mean, where well, did she think it was gonna go with future though? Like, it, I don't I don't judge everything off of dudes that what they rap about. The future gets high all the time. Like that's yeah. if that's not your lifestyle, then where is that really gonna go with you? You know what I mean? Like, but sometimes too. I mean, just just even with the whole um, the double standard. You know what I'm saying? She just 
that what's real is one thing I've realized entering into that industry, and I'm pretty sure you guys can both agree, is it, it that circle gets smaller and smaller. You know what I'm saying? So they're hanging out with pretty much like the same people. And, you know, there's not really many, uh, I don't want to say uh, R&B singers as there are rappers, but like that's that's kind of what she's attracted to. I mean, when you look at 50, because she was, she was with 50, you know what I'm saying? He was a rapper. Um, she was with Bow. He was a rapper. I don't want to say I he know. was a thug. <laughs> 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 I started to say Lil Bow Weezy, but nah. Um, I mean, you know, sometimes that's just what it is. I mean, we're attracted to sometimes the things we shouldn't be. No, you know it what I mean? Dudes, you're attracted to the wrong type of Yeah, people. I mean, like, you where know. Do you, where do you think that was going to go, son? But like, <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Well, I mean, you have to remember that... Um, like you said, it's like to date a lot of coworkers, and I could only imagine if I if I was in that circle, that you know, that I might start dating the same kinds of people, mm-hmm. and also the quote unquote thug. Maybe they're not looking at them like as a thug. It, you know, there's a, appealing things about them. Future seems like a really smart guy. I like his music, and anyone who creates something like that, there has to be some kind of other appeal to them. I mean, you know, despite the drugs or whatever else yeah. you think. Um, I don't know that he's had any violent po- problems since he's been a public figure, but you know, I, I could see how a quote unquote thug could be appealing to a lot of women. Yeah, I mean, and then on top of that too, she was dealing with these guys when they were pretty much hot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that could also have a play uh, in it. And they also were all musicians, so in creating that art, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily the bad guy, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, yo, it, it is what it is. And sometimes I think we get with people, too, and I was having this conversation, you know, we get with people and we hope to change them, you know what I mean, yeah. and tailor them to how we want them to be. And uh, can't really do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> a rum. <Yeah. laughs> so, I mean, yo, um situations like that definitely uh happen and you know you move forward on them oh uh, yeah i definitely agree you can't really change people because what is the purpose of that like uh maya angelou always says if when people tell you who they are you got to listen and you really do like don't try to change people don't be like yo that person is going to be different in a year or i can be nice to him and teach him how to be nice it don't it don't work like that look at you with your quotes i'm here with it all right, <laughs> all right. I'm here with it. woman's history month I hear Word, ow, woman's month <laughs> speaking of women's uh women's history month i almost forgot about that with the uh russell wilson video that came out he got to use that as a segue the uh, women's i think it was women's history day he said um where he has a video out where sierra's homegirl is sitting on his lap wait what <laughs> yeah he like it's a <laughs> facebook live video <laughs> just to give y'all y'all can go check it out probably on youtube or something like that oh, yeah. uh he calls uh the young lady over forgot her name um but she's apparently one of sierra's real close friends i think she's actually one of her stylists and um oh pamela is that it? No, I don't know. I just it sound Pamela. like it sound like Pamela the type to sit on somebody's lap. <laughs> oh, you mean Edna? <laughs> just putting out <laughs> names. You talking about you talking about Gladys? No. Yeah. Well, the internet though did run crazy with it because it was like, well, is that allowed in a relationship? Like, should your home girl sit on your boyfriend's lap? Uh, as a dude, would you have beef if your girl sat on your homeboy's lap? Um, I started off by saying, hell yeah, that's <laughs> issue. Like, that shit is not cool. I mean, if y'all all cool and y'all all a group of friends, I just think at a certain level, you got to respect other people's comfort level. So y'all might be cool and it, it might be like, yo, we know this isn't a sexual thing, but does that make Ciara comfortable? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or, or uncomfortable. And I think her feelings need to be thought of a little bit more in that moment rather than how close y'all are as friends. But I'll, I'll let y'all touch on it. Well, I can't well you um... Earlier, Niche was talking about how uh, Ciara got her a winner this time. With all the dudes she dated, she got her a winner this time. I tend to agree with that that judgment in that I feel that Russell Wilson's a very smart dude, and I feel that if he's done that, there's something he knows that we don't quite understand. I mean, I just feel that way. Yeah. Maybe You know, he's still young, so maybe not, but I really want to believe that he knows his relationship so well that he would have her friend sit on his lap. Oh, that's just the how, genius behind it. Wait, <laughs> how, wait, how, you said he's young. How old is he? Uh, he's got to be 24, 25. Yeah. He, oh, uh, wow. He left college. I, think I, I didn't even know yeah. he was that young. But, I mean, you know, you don't know, like how you said, we don't know what happens behind their closed doors. That's the one thing. And, you know, like you mentioned, Russell's been pretty cool with everything going on. I mean, he's, keep, he's kept a, a level head. And I... 
I know for me personally, you sitting on somebody else's lap, I'm not really with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. once again, with personal space. I don't want, you know what I mean? Because think about it too in a sense of maybe if it's not even the best friend. I think of anyone. What if it's your ex? Sitting on your lap? Or you're sitting on your ex's lap. Well, you know what I mean? Either or. You know what I mean? Yeah, Whatever yeah. the situation may be, it's just like, yo, like, that's a little bit too close. Like, yeah. He's uh, he's 28 years old. Oh, he's 28, so okay. He, I, I don't know if we can still say he was too young to know that, but um, he... He's a good guy, though. I mean, if you know anything about him, you know what I mean, and you know his background. I think that's what kind of gave him the pass. I think Keith alluded to that, where it's like, you don't really think there's anything mischievous behind Russell Wilson's intentions, but look at his eyes in that video, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think y'all listened to his words, because he was like, come over here, girl. It's a woman's day. You even know what the, what the occasion was. He's like, it's a woman's, it's a woman's day, on history month, man. <laughs> Women's history. <laughs> Not, if anything, it wasn't a sitting in the lap. It was the way he was talking to her. He was talking like a he was from a black exploitation film. Like he was like, Come over here, girl. Show. You don't even talk like that. Right? <laughs> no, I know. I'm like, why, why are you talking like that? He's like, talking like what? See? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's what it was. Maybe he was just I, I I mean, I haven't seen the video yet. So, you know, I mean maybe that's just really what it was. It was just him or maybe like reenacting, to- being funny, you know. Maybe, or, or or he's just tired of all the bullshit with Future. <laughs> and he's like, yo, I'm coming out on my own. Like, this is how it's going to be from now on. See, I get used to it. Right. <laughs> Speaking of that... Um, I haven't heard Future's reaction, but I can't wait to hear it. Because uh, Ciara released a picture. Oh, uh, yeah. She's pregnant, right? Right now? Yeah, I, yeah she's sure definitely far, pregnant. Far along she is. But there is a picture, you could Google it, uh, of her. Uh, Russell Wilson's hands seem to be in the picture. He's behind Ciara. And she's holding her naked son. Um, <laughs> and then you can see her, you know, she's showing off her, obviously her, her belly. I think she might be naked as well. Or, yeah, he um, has the hands on the belly from the back. Yeah, yeah. So it, it may or may not be Russell Wilson, but you assume it is. Yeah. Um, no, I definitely... <laughs> Playboy left it open like That's a quarterback for him right there <laughs> 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 Now whatever the case may be But alright now I gotta ask y'all the question Cause I know I wouldn't like that Like my naked child being in a picture With my kid's mother's new boyfriend Or husband I think uh, Sierra like somebody should have tapped you on the shoulder And been like eh <laughs> maybe, maybe leave Russ out of this Or maybe Future so One of them could have been out of it And I feel where she's coming from She's a young lady That's her family and those are the that that's the style of maternity pics as far as nakedness goes. And let us also not forget that Russell later had put out a picture where the son was actually clothed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I, I mean, so. yeah, I yeah. I mean, <laughs> there was so there's two there's two different pictures. You know what I'm saying? All in the same uh, so, shoot, like the same shot, the same shot. But he has pants. Him? Yeah, he oh, has on okay. pants. So I mean, you know, let's not forget that part. But the whole thing about it too is like, I mean, when do we stop just calling? Russell, the the boyfriend, like he hasn't been around putting no, in work. Um, yeah, well, yeah, they're married. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I don't. My, where I come from with it is, I just think you should leave the kid out of it. Because, right, for instance, I think Ciara would have an issue if <laughs> Future did a naked photo shoot <laughs> with his new girlfriend and baby Future. <laughs> just cause she's not even pregnant. <laughs> like, I just feel like having around some naked bitches right now. Like, I think that Ciara would beef about that. Um, whatever the context of, or maybe Future might get his new girlfriend pregnant. I think. There's a certain line right there, and you got to look at it from the other person's end before. I know you you should have the freedom to do what you want to do. You're a young lady, Ciara. That's your family. But I also think you got to look at it from the other person's perspective, and I think you kind of went over the line right there. I don't. No? No, no I personally don't. I, I mean, yeah, I think about the it, though. Nakedness, though, I think that I don't have a problem with the picture. I think I just don't want my kid being naked in the picture with your new... But it's, it's new. not as though he's... Touching the kid. Holding the kid. Yeah, he's not touching the Close son. You know what I'm enough, saying? Man, look at that picture. Well, <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta look at his fingers. Look at that thumb. Look at his fingers. Look at the thumb. I told y'all with the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> the chick's in on the lap. Look at his hands, y'all. Oh man, I think um I think that was a, a beautiful picture. It I is. mean, I'm not really down for you know, those type of style of maternity you know what pictures. Would be, why that? What would make that picture really beautiful to me if that was his son? That I think it's all like hands. But off. but that's the thing too. Like that's not his son, but. Look at now. how he's embraced him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, that's like a so. Thing. It's just the nudity. <laughs> you just say with the picture. <laughs> I, mean, I get nah, it. I just do without the nudity. Like if I feel like if everyone could see, I was dressed. Or you know, he could have put a diaper on homeboy. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I just feel like you wouldn't want your naked son or daughter in your baby father's photo shoot with his new woman. So you should show that same respect. I know maybe you and Future aren't on the same page. I got a lawsuit going on, but this this comes across as you doing funny stuff to get a reaction. You know what I mean? I don't think that's her. That was her intention. And I think she should have the freedom to take a picture with her family as it is, but it just feels like it went over that line to like, all right, well, this is definitely going to get a reaction out of, out of somebody. 
What you think about it, Keith? Where you, where yeah, you, where you at with it? Uh, I have no problem with the picture. However, I just think is I just think it's weird. But as far as the out of principle, um, is Ciara being disrespectful or anything like that? I don't think so. I just think this kid is really tall to be taking some nude photo. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when you look at it, this kid is old. He's like, what's eight year old naked? <laughs> he was like eight years his old. Le- she his did. legs is dangling long. And, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I feel like I feel like before they left the house to go to the Sizz photo studio, she didn't explain the entire concept to Russell Wilson. So he said, "Oh, so I'm just gonna be behind you taking the picture. I'm gonna be holding you, right?" He's like, "Yeah, um, this more." But I'll tell you in the car ride. <laughs> Russell's like, "All righty," and then now there's this. Um, I mean, I, I think there's some artisticness to it. I get it. A lot of people nowadays are really comfortable with their body, yeah. and they're trying to re-embrace the human form. Um, when you think about those old old pictures of like, um, you know, like they got the statues with the, yeah, the, the statue of David yeah, and all that it. stuff. Yep. So I think there's a renaissance of like the human form, and like she's. Embrace. Trying to capture that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's kind of like what Janet Jackson. Though this very much has the vibe of what Janet Jackson did a couple of decades ago. Over the, with the hands on the breast. With the, ha- the, the hands on the breast, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. You see, why well, we're here with me? Like she's pregnant, so let's say that she has she has that kid. Um, that's gonna be Russell's baby. Let's say Sierra moves on and goes back to rappers after this. <laughs> is he well, going with the next photo shoot with with that baby <laughs> butt naked <laughs> with, with little Yachty? Uh, uh, hey, uh, Ali, how do you like? I don't even wanna. Uh, how, how do how do I handle what you just said? Let's see what angle I'm gonna get in that. Pause. Um, <laughs> yeah, I see you like uh, the head. Uh, what, what, what I think about about that? If I were future, I would. If or I, if I were, if my the mother of my child moved on from me and had a photo like this, yes, I would be hurt. But I, I, I approach it from the stance of um, they are married now, and me getting into a marriage myself, this is Russell Wilson's family now. Like yeah. His stepson is now his son. Well, after this kid is born, he will now have two children. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So them taking those types of liberties of, of saying, all right, we're going to take this picture um, with it, if I were the the child's son, the this tall kid's son, I I would be kind of hurt. Um, you mean his father? If if I was future, yeah, like if I was the future's position, but um, you know, I could only imagine a future. I don't know if he cause, um, co-signed this. I I, I, don't I know. know. He probably doesn't. Probably, <laughs> it, probably doesn't know. co-sign. I mean, yeah, the nakedness. It's, it, on that so the nakedness is messed up. But I guess I I have a question for you guys. What's up? What if it wasn't a son, and they had a daughter. Same ten, picture. Ten times worse. Even. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, but did you know what I think? And I'm, I, I, I don't. I don't well, you're know. traditional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, I hear a lot of traditional sensibilities coming out of what you're saying. I think mm-hmm. she looked at that picture after she did, or, or when the concept hit her in her mind, and she was like, "This gonna, this gonna blow up on social media. This gonna get that reaction I want. It's gonna get them likes." You think and so? I feel like, yeah, I feel like you're doing it more so for that, or because she didn't even have to. Well, we didn't have to see that picture. That could have no, been. No, but I mean. I agree. I think I would agree with that. This this definitely element. I don't think that was her number one thought when posting the picture because I think that posting stuff is just so yeah. much part of our culture that that's and that's yeah. the trend, yeah. like the maternity trend. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can't. There hasn't been a person who more fucking has you know been pregnant and didn't do a photo shoot. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it, it's leaking over into even with um. You know what I mean? People that aren't necessarily celebs. I mean, everyone's trying to be creative in, in the way the that way they, they recreate their... Yeah, they announce it. They actually just take the photos. Some people take the photos and and that is their announcement. Or like, you know, with her, we already knew she was pregnant. So it's like, you know, people just always try to capture that. Even with um Jocelyn, when she, you know, the way she dresses. um Hernandez. Love and hip hop. Yeah, oh, okay. you know, mm-hmm. there was big talks on her as well too because, you know, she was wearing dresses with her belly out. You know, when she was pregnant, you know, she had dresses with her belly out. And I didn't think that was, I don't want to say, um, I thought it was fine. I just know that it was different from what, you know what I mean? I'm used to seeing, like, I don't, you don't really see people out there, like you said, celebrating the the human body. Like, we don't see that like that. You know what I mean? What was the reaction that got? Was it a lot of slut shaming going on? Yeah, it was, it was mixed reviews. You know what I'm saying? Mixed reviews. And I, I mean, it's, it's cool and all, but at the same time, I couldn't. Fully, it's not. I couldn't judge it because 
it's just something that I haven't seen before. You know what I mean? Like, we don't see much of it, pretty much. So it's not considered the norm. But at the same time, shit, she could do what she want. Yeah. You know? We, we could agree to uh, disagree on this. That's the beautiful thing about Perfect Talk. Everybody ain't gonna have the same opinions all the time. I just feel like that should have been the joint that we gonna hang up in the house. You know what I mean? That's gonna be the joint we frame. Um, and then we gonna take another one and remix it for social media. But maybe I'm just with the nudity. Like I said, if that kid was fully dressed, I probably couldn't, couldn't find anything wrong with that picture. Now you would want him to wear corduroys <laughs> and like a, a sweater, like a more close <laughs> to normal, a, a, yeah. A, a, a houndstooth sweater while <laughs> Russell Wilson and Ciara's naked in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question, another question for y'all. It's not necessarily um, related to this, but you know, just a, a gentle segue. Um, how do you guys feel about you know being males? How do you guys feel about women pictures even with the breastfeeding in public and everything Ooh, she touched on that one. okay <laughs> like how do you you know i mean just because you know as far as nudity you know women showing i'm gonna keep thinking about his answer well I'll, I'll say this i'll say that i'm not comfortable with it mm-hmm. i'm not comfortable with the the breastfeeding and the celebration of the public breastfeeding mm-hmm. but i think it's because i don't know where that activism is coming from yeah. you know what i'm saying like because I, I see the activism and i know that i don't feel comfortable with it but i think it's because i don't feel i, I don't know where it's coming from quite similar to when people that are um are being activists for causes that i myself subscribe to how those how those i guess acts of activism make other people uncomfortable but i guess now i'm the shoe is on my yeah. foot now yeah. so um i wish i could l- know a little bit better where that's coming from but it makes me very uncomfortable t- for people to um say that you know you should let me breastfeed in public and you shouldn't give me looks and and all this other stuff so I do you that. think it's like a big difference between you know being in public and just seeing a woman with her titty out feeding her her child or you know how sometimes they have like the cloaks that cover the baby right. i mean are you are you against it both you know what i'm saying or does I, Is it just the same shit? I, I like the idea of a cloak because it, it you using the cloak acknowledges that this is not yet normal. Or mm. normal's the wrong word. This is not yet mainstream. Fully acceptable. I like this I feel if like let's say I'm the woman who said, thinks that breastfeeding, public breastfeeding should be like a thing. Let's say I feel that I should be breast I'm on the the bus stop and I should be breastfeeding here in public. Yeah. But I have this cloak. It's like acknowledging, like, listen, I want to do this, but I understand. I respect your, I respect your, your stance. Your stance. Yeah. Uh, one day this thing is going to become mainstream, but for now I acknowledge it. You know what I'm saying? So they're doing the public breastfeeding with that compromise of I'm going to be using the cloak. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah. Play? Um, just so all the ladies out there, new mothers, hop in Keith's mentions and bash him. You can hop on my, my hotmail. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, before I had a kid, I probably was uh, more so where Keith was at with it. Um, now that I've had a kid and I was with my kid's mother when she was breastfeeding, um, I just I know the demand of it when you when their kid's hungry, your kid's hungry. Um, mm-hmm. With that being said, now you got two options. You got either. You could be in the middle of a movie theater. You could be in a basketball game. You could either decide to do it right there, or you could decide to get up and do it somewhere else, right? Um, mm-hmm. You decide to do it right there. You're at the uh, expense of a. Uh, you're there, basically vulnerable to anyone's comments. Yeah, public some, opinion. Some dude sitting there just staring at you weirdly. Gotcha. You made that decision because you said, "I'm I'm comfortable here. My kid's hungry here, and I'm not gonna get up and go somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe you might have other kids with you. Whatever your your reason may be. So it's, it's the, you gotta have a give and a take with it. I decided I'm. A, sacrifice my comfort for maybe some weirdo saying something to me um i'm more so with the cloak i think you know because some people might feel uncomfortable about it and some people just might not understand it it's one of those things like i don't think you I, like i just i started off saying i understand it more now because i have a kid yeah. so until you do it until you're in that situation Experience i don't it. think you're gonna fully have an understanding for that lady's um sense of uh, situation right there so with that being said i think the cloak shows respect to your comfort level mm-hmm. and anyone else who might be uncomfortable by it it's your body it's it's, it's the, you do what you want you're feeding your kid it's a beautiful thing i don't get a bone looking at some lady breastfeeding her kids so yeah. that's not a sexual thing to me um maybe to some people <laughs> maybe to some people out there it is it's just like well, so you gotta worry about those people yeah, out there because they're there you know what i'm saying and they they gonna sneak a peek if they could so you know what I mean? you gotta you got to be sensible of that. Uh, with that being said, it's your freedom. It's your body. It's your kid. Uh, Word. Rock out. 
Word. It's 2017. But if you got get the kid fully undressed and then take a picture <laughs> with him, <laughs> oh, yeah. then I'm going to start having a problem with that. <laughs> Sierra. Oh, well, we man. Because I'm going to stop beefing with Sierra and move on to some, some real beef, fan beef. Uh, your man Meek Mill, he had a situation at the airport this week. Um, T.I. Mm-hmm. also got himself in a similar situation, but we'll start with Meek. Looks like he was traveling through an airport. Um, had a fan who also happened to be an airport employee. Yep. Want a uh, autographed picture or maybe both, and Meek wasn't in the mood for it. He was like, nah, you know, chill, gave him a little head bop. Uh, dude felt like he wanted to express, uh, it sounds like something that was on his chest, that how fans don't, uh, sorry, artists don't really show appreciation to their fans. I think he, he was more so looking at it from a fan standpoint, not realizing that this might be the they always do. fan. They yeah, always do. <laughs> that Meek Mill had seen that day. So, But he's looking at it like, yo, you're being stank. You, you know, you acting up. You don't want to show no love. Um, so they got into a little argument. I guess when uh, Meek Mill was passing back through that same airport, his entourage got back into it, and a brawl broke out uh, with that guy and another airport employee. Um, fast forward to T.I. He's at a gas station. You could probably YouTube the video. Uh, it's a lady filming him. I think she, the little kid's taking pictures with him at some point in the video. Um, and then near the end, it's a dude playing T.I. very close. Seems like he's taking a lot of pictures. And T.I. has like an issue, like how many pictures are you going to take? Man. Homeboy's uh, in his personal space, All leaning on it. his truck. It could have turned into something else real quick. Um, you know what I mean? But it didn't. Luckily, T.I. was cool about it. But where, where do y'all stand at that? Like, because, you know, we, we, we talk about we could talk about this for years. Like, celebrities mm-hmm. and paparazzi have always had issues. But now the fans are paparazzi because everyone has a phone yep. with a camera on it. That is definitely true. <laughs> so it's like, you don't not, you don't even got to worry about TMZ. Everyone wants to take a picture. Everybody wants to catch you doing something that you probably shouldn't be doing or somewhere you shouldn't be. So where do you draw the line on the self-respect? Because it's oh, sorry, the respect that you'd have to your artist. Because it's like, I, I love you. I respect your work. You could have told me that from across the street, though. You know what I mean? You could have had a head bob. You want, you want something from me in this moment. But how much respect are you showing me? You know what I'm saying? Where do y'all, where do y'all come up doing that? What's up, Keith? Shoot it. Um, celebrities, got, you got to be... Listen, that's what you signed up for. Part that's just... Job? Yeah, I mean, that's that's part of your job description is to take, take fa- the fans' admiration and accept it and be ready for it. Um, now, for the fan, they just have to be ready to for somebody to get ignorant on, on them. You know what I'm saying I don't know about yeah. fighting. The fighting, in my opinion, is totally wrong. Like you should expect to um, get fans, and if you're just gonna have an attitude, you're gonna have an attitude. Um, I think your security did a poor job. If if they, you know, you could peacefully keep fans away. You know what I'm saying? So I think the celebrity should be prepared to get those fans. I heard Charles Barkley's really good at accepting fans. Like, every fan that comes by, you know, he does the autographs and the pictures and all that stuff. So, and I guess Meek Mill and T.I. Well, the T.I. thing was different, though. Homie was really on just, like, a person-to-person level. Yeah. Just like, you know, like, he looked like he came out the truck. Like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, he oh, was mad close. He, was, he took pictures with, with T.I. And the part about him just taking a bunch of pictures, um, I'm, I, I'm not mad at that. But it was kind of like he's close to T.I. T.I.'s yeah. pumping gas. Like he's, he's, taller, he's taller than T.I. So he's like at an advantage if something were to happen based on the way they were standing. Yeah, I, I guess he was a threat. But yeah. even before I get to like the threat level, it was just kind of like he was literally violating his space in the sense that T.I. couldn't do what he was trying to do. He was trying to pump gas. He's in the guy's way. You know, the guy was literally standing between T.I. and the driver's, the driver's side door. Mm-hmm. Um, that... T.I. had a right for doing what he did because T.I. didn't um, – he didn't overreact. He's like, listen, Potter, you need to back up a little bit. Like, he never yelled at the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he never – he's just like, listen, from, you know, dude to dude, I'm just telling you, man. Like, you just – this is not cool. So, that's where I'm at on it. Celebrities should be ready for it and they shouldn't freak out. Even with the T.I. thing, not to cut you off, mm-hmm. T.I. thing, homie got what he needed. So, he got the picture. He, he got it a like, few yeah. times. I think in the Meek Mill uh, situation – it doesn't. I, I'm not gonna take the fan side on that one, but at least Homeboy had something where he could say where he requested something and he didn't get what he wants. Just because you request something doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get it. But whatever little slick comment he had, um, it was said. And I agree with Keith on the point. Like you're a celebrity. What if he would have said something like, "Yo, that's why Drake dissed you. That's why you know me. Uh, that's why Nicki left you." Out of nowhere, you have to be prepared as an artist. You gonna fight everyone that has some slick comment to say. You know what I mean? So it does come with part of the job. I'll let you talk on it, Tony. Yeah, I mean it, it does come with. Um part of the job but there i believe that there definitely there's a line that needs to be drawn right you know um there's been many instances where you know different celebrities have been 
in a uh, situation where it just it doesn't pan out right and they can they're they're not doing anything wrong during that moment like even with ti like we all know just with the type of person he is um it could have went left oh, yeah. real quick and even you know he had got on the phone and you know i don't know what really transpired with the conversation but you know the other guy felt like oh who you calling da, 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 da. you know it doesn't matter at this point you know you're real close and it's like if you see someone that's uncomfortable with you being up in their personal space i mean celebrity or not it's just like yo give them that space you're 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 way too close i even think about um the situation that happened with uh with big sean um and he was signing autographs. You guys remember that? No, I got to touch on that. It was like a couple weeks ago, or it might even been a few weeks ago, Big Sean had a situation where he had a signing. And, yo, the dude came, uh, I think it was a guy, he came in, Um, I don't know if he, he hit Big Sean or what, and they shut it down. But it's like, you know, here you have people at these signings waiting for you to, to, to be intimate with you because you are a fan and they do appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? This is when he was on the whole uh, I Decided promo run. So it's like, yo, come on. You know, it's not fair for, I feel like, the fans to pick and choose, you know, when when they want their pick, even though, you know, sometimes fans, they don't really get a chance to, to see celebs like that. You know, like she said, yo, he in the hood right now with mm-hmm. the T.I. joint. So she was just happy that he was down there. And then the guy, you know, he could have been uh, extra excited. But... Um, one thing I definitely want to say is that, um, you know, sometimes people get bashed, like how we mentioned um, before, prior we were talking how with being a male um, and having, you know, a, a fan, fans. yeah, male fans, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think being a male, you can have a, you know, you can be all excited to uh, be a super fan or a super uh you know, just supporter of whatever person it is. And the same thing with females. But, I mean, there definitely has to be a line drawn with personal space. And, you know, remember when Kanye was going through all that? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, to me, it's personal space. But at the same time, like you guys did say, you have to, um, being a celebrity, you have to kind of own that part too. You know what I'm saying? See, because it comes with a vulnerability. Someone could just, yeah. homeboy could have just started while now hoping that T.I. hit him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then he, he get a lick. He getting paid off of that. You know what I mean? So, that's where I think the vulnerability comes in, and I side with celebrities on that point. If you're, and it's just my personal, the, the views of DJ Playboy do not represent perfect talk, but if you're a male fan and you like, a, you know what I'm saying, you like somebody and he's a dude, keep it G. Like, don't be up there screaming and yelling like a little girl. Like, you know what I mean? Yo, homeboy, I, like, I respect your work. What's up? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, because I, I understand you want to take a picture with him so you can throw it on your Instagram. But that's corny. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't want to take no picture, you don't want to take no picture. If you really like his work, tell him you respect his work and keep it moving. Like, all your friends and family don't have to know you met T.I. that day. Don't have to know you met Meek Mill that day. Like, but they, being a cornball for social media. But at the same time, too, one thing I realized that um, sometimes a lot of the aggression may come from... Um, Celeb- like male to male You know what I mean You don't really hear too much About male to female Because you guys Will take pictures with female. Girls so Think about it You could be real tired That's what them dudes Is mad about They're like yeah. Yo you just took a picture With Shorty Like you just did that With, with, with uh, uh, Yeah I mean Like yo I'm, I don't get The same respect As a human being But come on man Like stop I'll be honest man My my, uh, my opinions My opinions Don't necessarily Reflect those of Perfect talk But they do differ From uh, my man Playboy In that Sometimes you gotta. Sometimes you gotta be a bitch, man. If you gotta, you know, if you're somebody you admire, for instance, in about 2003, there was a ceremony when I was in the Army Reserves. There was a ceremony to um, send some folks over to Kuwait, and one of the there were like three special speakers, two of them were like random council members. Then the third was Ja Rule, man. I saw Ja Rule. I was like, that's Ja Rule, kid. And yeah, and I'm like, why is Ja Rule here sending people to Kuwait? <laughs> but after, I was like, hey, John, you know, I really appreciate everything you do. And then, you know, we're all service members. He was like, you know, yeah, I admire what you guys are doing. <laughs> and, you know, just do your thing, boy. Just stay up, you know, uh, go to school and Baby. make your parents proud. And I'm like, all right, John. <laughs> And I became a bitch in that moment. I was just, I was just. <laughs> you shortened it. You shortened it to Ja. Yeah, All right, Ja. You know what I yeah, mean? Well, I thought we were friends at that point. <laughs> yeah, but you wasn't trying to like hug him. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't all up on him, boy. Like, nah, nah, I wasn't yeah. all up on him. But nah, yeah, like you could go too far. But as far as the man to man thing, um, yo, the, these stars mean a lot to people. You know what I'm saying? Including men. And you know, me, my my opinion on it, opinion on it is that. Uh, my manhood shouldn't be so um, fragile, such such that I hashtag <laughs> hashtag <laughs> um, it shouldn't be so fragile, such that I'm afraid of 
approaching uh, a male a male artist the way that I think that a female fan would. The only thing I would say is that I know that maybe I may seem more threatening yeah. to that person. So I have to understand that. But as far as they don't my, understand that. my pride, yeah. I, I don't have... Well, y'all know me, man. I don't got no pride. But <laughs> just my pride is not what's stopping me. It's what how that that celebrity perceives it that would be stopping me. So also you have to understand this, you know, that's the sociology of who you're dealing with. Like, yeah. I think I would, you know, well, Justin Timberlake probably has more um, security or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I run up on him, like, man, yo, I love that first solo album. That was sick, yo. Get body slammed. Yeah, real man, quick. body slammed. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, but like, so. but I, remember when Plies got thrown off the stage? I was just about to say, catch that Plies <laughs> joint. Yeah, yeah, homie was mad close to him. And he, 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 Plies tried to play him. He didn't have to say on the microphone, you know what I mean? Back well, up me back then, but... Home, we just picked him up and threw him. Like that's why you can't get close to him. Yeah, that okay? that's the thing. Yeah, that, I mean, just on a, a straight security level. Yeah, that's why you can't. I guess you can't be running up on them. It reminds me um, of how people in the street they see my dog and want to run up all on his face. <laughs> I, I'm like, man, I, I'm like you gotta like go from the side. But before you could, they would ask you permission to pet your dog. And I, I know I'm going straight left with this. And like just charge at him right to his face with their hands and stuff and then he feels all threatened I mean yeah, I, I know it's like yeah, that's that's real. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean uh, before I approach a, a celebrity I would you know I'd be like hey I'm about to approach you I appreciate your stuff so they see me coming and see that I don't got no you know but you can't just be running up on people all loud yeah. inside of you. I know what and you're doing. It's a person. It's like exactly. And one thing that you mentioned before play was like you know we're in a day and age where people are now you know, considered TMZ, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, paparazzi. And, you know, they want that, sometimes they want that attention. They may try to egg you on as yeah. a celeb just to be like, yo, you know, look, now I'm on the shade room and da-da-da, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, it, some people look for for that hot story. They want to be a part of that hot story. So, I mean, just in a celeb's defense, it's just like, dang, you know, you don't, you don't want that to be you. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to get plied. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, that yo, that, yo, all he bounced, that. He back, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's been it's been so many instances, and it's just like the way to actually dodge all that is to keep your security, which you pretty much at all times. But then you know, that creates a barrier with the people. But you know, hey, I mean, when we started with it's the beef episode. Apparently, we started with Nikki versus Remy, moved on to Birdman and, and uh, Rick Ross, Sierra versus Future, Meek Mill and Ti versus they fans. Not a big dog. Snoop versus Trump. I don't know if y'all checked that out this week, but your man Snoop dropped a. I don't think it's his song. I think he's featured on a, um a, in a music video on a song uh-huh. called "Bad Bad uh, No Good." And in the video, he is shooting a clown uh, that apparently is dressed like Donald Trump with a prop gun. Um, people had an issue with it. They thought you know it represented killing the president. I've heard people explain it as more so he's killing the idea of um, Trump's immigration laws. Um, cause they touch on that in the video as well, but it, you know, it's obviously a gun pointed at the president. Um, in response to that, uh, some rappers had come out, oh, man, uh, I'll let Keith talk on, um, who, who was the first one to respond? Was it Snoop? Snoop responded on over Twitter or was it T.I.? Uh, I thought T.I. <clears throat> well, I saw Snoop had a video that, a response video oh, did he? Okay. to, to, I think the Trump tweet pretty, pretty much saying, it was, a, it was a non-comment saying that I know you guys want me to comment, but I ain't going to comment. And was, that's pretty much the video. Okay, so let's, let's go to the story. Oh, then, so the story goes, Trump responded first. What was Trump's response? Uh, let's, let's see. Trump's response. Can you imagine what the outcry would be if at Snoop Dogg, failing career and all, had <laughs> aimed and fired the gun at President Obama? I love how he Jail throws, time! <laughs> I love how he throws a little critique on his career right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> He said jail time. If he had pointed, yeah, he said jail time! Oh, exclamation shit. point. And then, uh, so then, then, then Snoop dropped their response video. You just said, um, and then Ti and I think Bow Wow came out with some controversial tweets at Don. They, they added him in it, so it's going right uh, directly to him. What did uh, what you have up there first? Uh, you got Ti, anybody? Or Bow Wow? I didn't have. Um, I fine with Ti. Ti, I, I, mm-hmm. I got uh, Bow Wow said, um, "Hey yo." Real Donald Trump, shut your punk ass up talking about <laughs> shit about my uncle Snoop before we pimp your wife and make her work for us. Jesus, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know when like, like you when you chilling with your your peoples 
And like y'all riffing, you know, telling jokes, or y'all riffing on something, and yeah. one person come out of left field saying, "Yeah, oh fuck your mom." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Whoa, come on!" Took it too far, Bow Wow. Took it. It was like, just I chill. Like, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa Bow Wow, just chill. <laughs> My lord, you're not that like. You're not respected. And what's who, who Bow Wow pimping? I mean, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna disrespect his pimping. He got <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> got decent list out there. I be like, ain't no telling. I ain't gonna front. Bow Wow be. Uh, Mm, do what he do but yeah and then that also got um the uh anchor what you guys remember what news station she was actually i think it from? was fox news she's a commentator uh kimberly guilfoyle Foyle, yep mm-hmm. and she has some interesting things to say about it as well too she you know she expressed her opinion and then when they asked her like yo you know what do you think should uh be done she uh, said kill, kill them, them. <laughs> And she didn't just say it once. She said it twice. Kill them. She went the Sean Paul route. Going Point on them. to say, kill them. <laughs> kill them. I think it would be fantastic if Snoop and Wannabe Snoop, that was pretty funny. She said Snoop and Wannabe Snoop, Bow referring wow. to <laughs> referring to the artist formerly known as Little Bow Wow. And uh, so it would be fantastic if Snoop and Wannabe Snoop got a visit from federal marshals. Let's see how tough, a gangst- tough and gangster they are then. I would like to comment on the fact that it's almost like she's... I guess threatening them with the prospect of having um, law enforcement get on that ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. like that, and you know that kind of imagery. That's what she goes to. Like, I can't wait till law enforcement gets on them. They didn't do anything illegal. They just like the the president does. They exercise their First Amendment right. So pretty much. Well, well. T.I. <laughs> did say, uh, at Snoop Dogg is a fucking legend, you fucking tangerine tan, muskrat, scrotum skin, lace front, possum fur, wig wearing, alternative fact, atomic dog diarrhea, <laughs> face ass man. <laughs> Levi Ledger's name out your fucking old ass, puppy piss smelling ass mouth, and continue to focus on dividing minorities, building barriers, <laughs> alienating immigrants, Not and fucking this country up like you've been doing. Dot, dot, dot. Hashtag, you want to be dictator. Hashtag, presidential level fuckboy. For some reason, the first Sheesh. half of that text, uh, sorry, that tweet looked like T.I. typed it and then someone else hopped in at the end. Yo, I was just <laughs> about to say, yo, that's word T- to Tiny my mother. Grabbed it. Because that's how, <laughs> you ever heard like the ad libs on his album? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> he went from uh, uh, T.I. to tip. <laughs> like, yo, scrotum skin, lace front possum. <laughs> Possible for a wig wearing, alternative fact, Tommy Dog die, real face ass man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at accents. I don't know. <laughs> I switch it up real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then he ended it. What it would say, me Dude, see. Focusing on dividing minorities, yeah, yeah, building yeah. barriers, and Name. alienating immigrants. Our legends' names out that, your fucking that's that old ass. Versus tip. Puppy piss smelling ass <laughs> mouth. And <laughs> continue to focus was. on yeah, dividing minorities, versus building versus barriers, yeah. alienating immigrants. And then after he this calmed country, down like after a minute. Going. Yeah. After all them goddamn uh, grammar pres- errors. Presidential level fuck boy. Yeah. Hey. I don't know what's me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, T.I. was wilding with that one. Yeah, man. <laughs> but, they, um, they went in. And then uh, also um, the politician uh, Mike Huckabee. Uh, did you guys hear about his response? Nah, what he said. Uh, he pretty much said, uh, this guy, Bow Wow, what a bad dog. Take away all the bones. <laughs> he said, oh, then he was on... Um, what he say? Yeah, yeah. And then he got on his Twitter and said, "Poop dog has nephew named Bow Wow. Both bad dogs who advocate murder and sex slavery for POTUS and First Lady. Who oh, let Lord. the dogs out?" Yeah, I, well, you he, knew they was going that route. Yeah, Bow wow said that. I already knew. <laughs> so, well, he, Snoop is kind of keeping this issue at arm's length. Length, right? He took part yeah. in the art piece that sparked this whole thing, and I think he's right for doing so. I think um, this issue. It's too small for him and what he's what for instance, he tried to make a statement, a pretty large statement with this this video and the imagery there. I think this issue, this part of the issue, is just smaller than him. That's mm-hmm. just my opinion on it. You can only lose endorsements and um whatever anything else he has going on. It can't work in his favor. Yeah, it can't work. Well, I mean the if he didn't lose an endorsement for the video showing himself shooting the president <laughs> in, the, in the temple. Um but as far as just an integrity kind of thing, just how it looks, like Snoop Dogg, he's he's a a grown ass man and you know he's a pretty big celebrity and he's pretty influential aside from music so i just think that he should just keep this out of arm, you know at arm's length this part of the issue but as far far as like you know the the things he was trying to express in the video he should yeah. just stick with that but all this other extracurricular stuff i don't think he should get get into that i um, agree with that though because if you keep it art it's uh it, it keeps it 
subjective. You know what I mean? But yeah. nobody could ever just come and say, all right, once you say a word about it, once you argue, once you put a tweet out, same way they just did with Bow Wow, same way they just did with T.I., they're going to try to use your words against you. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, you're advocating I'm, sex I'm slavery. Obscene threat. Yeah, they, they used to brought us that. You're advocating sex. Well, I mean, Bow Wow did. I mean, Bow Wow. Sure, he said, took kill them. What do you yeah. Yeah. I was at the response to a tweet. Like, kill them? Like, what are you doing? Well, yeah, kill them was wrong, too. But yeah, as far went, as the sex slavery thing, left. is a point there. Um, but the fact that they lumped Snoop together with, with, with um, Bow Wow. Bow comment, yeah. That's, that's what, I don't like that. Kill them. I don't want, clearly, I don't like that. And then sicken federal, federal agents on them. I hate that. So. Yeah, uh, I hope Snoop stays out of it. I think T.I., I don't know, I, he's kind of too big for it also. Um, Bow Wow is an idiot. It. He's he a career it. idiot. <laughs> um, so, he needs to look right now. Yeah, Bow Wow is getting into some shit, man. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a, a dummy. Uh, I just think that he didn't have a real adulthood to really learn stuff. Yeah. Like, he just, like, broke all man code, all code code by t- talking about a man's wife. Like, that's just against... You know, code. It had nothing to do with it. The situation. It had nothing to do with it. Yeah, and then you know, saying we're gonna pimp. I'm mean, just taking it to sexual assault levels of a person's wife who a wife who's not involved. That was crazy. Little Bow Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Little Bow Wow. You, you just so don't know. We got a, we got Trump's the president now, and obviously Obama was the president before him. So I don't know if your opinion changed. Where do you fall on what are we allowed to say about the president and what we're not allowed to say about the president? Where do you think? Just freedom of speech, you can just say whatever you want, or... Yo, I believe you definitely have freedom of speech, but at the same time, too, like, there there definitely has to be a line of respect, but, but, I mean... Was Obama getting that respect? That's what I was about mm-hmm. to say, too. I, I just feel like now, I mean, this type of conversation, you know, would... When Obama was in office, this type of conversation was was being talked about, but it wasn't really being heard. You know what I'm saying? So now that we have this Caucasian male that's in office after a black guy just came through and, you know what I mean, shut it down for eight years, it's kind of like, yo, you know what I mean? Well, he shouldn't be saying this like this, but they dragged Obama. Mm-hmm, they dragged him back and forth. So it's kind of like, yo, I mean... Should you you should you, you shouldn't be threatening people. I mean, because you can. I mean, you go to court and all and that. You know that what I mean? you, yeah, yeah, you can't. I, and if they lose endorsements, like if Bow Wow loses whatever endorsements he has left, so <laughs> <laughs> like he about to get done with the Heelys. You know what I'm saying? No, but if he loses that, then that's on him. You know what I'm saying? Those are the choice of words that he decided to use, and I I feel as though like yo, you should be punished for that. You know what I mean? Whether you were defending someone or not, you know, it just it is what it is, and they're gonna use all of this against him. Some some how some way when he gets into some whatever type of trouble it, bring it's, it's coming back yeah. it's coming back man what do you think you about think about was an idiot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> should you what should you be able to um what should you be able to say about the um the president of the united states you should be able to say anything because the first amendment um what should you say uh i'm a i consider myself a patriotic fella um, I do believe in everything the country stands for. Uh, I'm a student of American history and all that stuff. Um, so I feel like you should have some level of respect for the president. But the First Amendment is there for a reason, for the purpose of um, s- dissenting against folks like like the president and other um, people in power. You should have some respect to shooting the president in the head thing. That's a lot. I I don't think I, I'm not. I don't dig it. You can hide behind the art, though. You could, yeah. You can hide it behind the art, and it is art. Um, and I guess it's not much different from uh, fuck the police. Yeah. yeah. And which I, That's I'm what not, I was about to say too. I wasn't necessarily against. Um. So yeah, I mean, I don't agree with it, but you know, uh, what what I'll say is um. Trump responded. I hate when these rappers make me defend Trump, but Trump responded to something that happened. Whatever you got to say, he kept it respectful in his tweet. You know what I mean? He, he's, he said he had a failing career. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, nobody's going to crucify Trump for, for those words that he used. You know what I mean? With that being said, y'all took it to a whole nother level. And it's like, you see it. Bow Wow took it to another level. T.I. took it to another level. And then the reporter was talking about kill them. Like, y'all got to get back to, we're all human beings. We all got to have a certain level of respect for each other. And if you can't have communication where Mm -hmm. you can use terms where it's not kill them, pimping your wife out, and all that nonsense, you know what I mean? It it shows that you're not mature enough to have these type of conversations. And you should not involve yourself in them at that point because you're you're only embarrassing yourself and the people that you represent. You know what I mean? But 
It's all about that beef, man, until y'all start respecting each other in the streets. Um, we got to wrap it up because we about that time. What's beef? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm going to make sure um, I remind y'all, get better every day. Check us out on Instagram, Perfect oh, Talk yeah. Radio, uh, Perfect Talk Podcast on Twitter. And say goodbye to the people, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know, signing out, niche all day. Uh, at A-O niche, A-Y-O, N-I-S-H. That's on Instagram, Twitter, all the great stuff. Holla at me. Click a peasy on Instagram, DJ Playboy on Twitter. Say goodbye to people, Keith. Uh, you could just write to me like you write to Santa. You just send a postcard, just write Keith on it, put it in the mailbox. They're going to start, wait, <laughs> they about to start sitting on your lap too? Like, what's <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> <laughs> Get better every day, y'all. We'll catch you, man. Peace. Yeah, yeah.